This is the second video in the channel where I take a look at the arrangement theory. In the first video, we focused on macro arrangement and used five different methods to actually create a full track from a loop. If you haven't seen it, I will add it here. I strongly suggest that you watch that video before you watch this one. But in today's video, we will focus on micro arrangement. It is just fancy way of saying making any loop more interesting. Micro arrangement consists of three different important layers. The first layer is characterization. The second layer is variation and third layer is automation and effects. And it's important that you follow this order if you want to have consistent results. So the first thing that you have to do with your macro arrangement is characterization, meaning that you have to decide how we control your energy level in your loop. In this case, we have a loop sounding like this. Four bar loop repeating four times. So the micro arrangement start this way. I will create a new tab like this. I'm gonna take this off and decide what I do with this loop. This is a chorus, right? This is like high energy part. So what, like, what can we do? We can say here in this part, I will have lower energy. I will have a bridge here. Again, if you don't know what these terms are, please watch the first video because I explained these terms in the first video and then we increase the energy levels here. Once you have done this, you should also briefly decide how you will also shuffle the different elements, right? Here, I can see that I have kick and bass all the time. Maybe I can take the kick off here and then hi-hats are all the time. Let's say that we don't want to introduce them here, right? This should be very good. We will come back and make everything a bit more smoother, right? Maybe like this. I can even take probably these off, right? Because this kind of a bridge. Let's leave the things a bit off. But I felt like maybe it should be shorter, right? But not at the same time. That's right. The only thing that matters here is actually thinking about the energy levels. Once you are done with the characterization, you should come to the second point in our list, which is the variation. Variation actually consists of four different elements. These are melodic variation, rhythmical variation, harmonic variation, and the final and important for electronic dance music is the tonal variation. We will start with the melodic variation. Melodic variation means that we will try to make a variation in the melodies in our track. In this case, if we take a look at here, we have a nice cool lead sound right here. First thing that I will suggest, B sections. Rather than having the same melody, you create the countering sections inside the melody itself to make the variation. So I would suggest, for example, here, the first one that's called the E section, but this should be a B section. When you are creating the B section, you shouldn't go really crazy with the melody. You should be also finding something either contrasting the first one or resembling the first one. Both is fine depending on what type of emotion you want to reflect. In this case, I know that there's a bass progression here. Why not introduce the same progression to our melody? So in this case, I'm thinking like here, and then we go maybe. And then we go even more here. And here, rather than like using over and over this one, what I'm thinking, let's take this melody off. This one is really nice. But what I'm going to do, duplicate this. Like. The main problem is that it's not following the ten 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 ten. So the melody itself also should progress progress with these ones, right? So we can bring down this. And now we will go back. Do you do you feel the sound of the ten 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 ten? Right? I'm gonna do the same here and maybe here we can take like this right and instead put an B right there let's go
you see how beautiful it sits right there. Again, the only difference here is making the melody work. So this is our B section. And what we do, we repeat the B section twice. Maybe we do A, B, B, B. And which brings us to the microtensional variations, melodic variations, which means that you change a couple of the notes for the part that you want to create a tension or create create relief. In this case, I have already an idea in my mind where can I create this kind of tension is just right in the break or the bridge. Uh, here we have this nice bridge. You see, right before then, maybe we should create a bit tension. And I know I don't need to do too much because I have this bass sound actually playing the D right here and what i'm thinking what if what if i just put it one octave up and create this dun, 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 like uh, the tension sound right here and let's do the same thing over here right bam right <laughs> it's so so cool and maybe we can exaggerate maybe a bit earlier than expected more tension yes yes just so good highlight those micro tensions so that we have easier time to see them when we want it for example here i'm thinking okay let's end of this part let's use the micro tensions again right we are ending the bars for eight bars so let's use it there let's take a look at the bridge one more time with the micro tensions <laughs> so beautiful okay this was the variation. So melodic variation, A, B sections, B sections, a contrasting or the con contributing element to the main melody and the micro tensions, micro reliefs are the micro changes you do in your notes to create this additional tension or relief. If you're enjoying the video up to now, if you feel like it's adding something to you, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. But let's jump back. By the way, all the samples and presets are coming from my Berlin pack and the Serum preset pack. So I will add both of them here somewhere, which brings us to rhythmical variation. In this case, you do the variation in your rhythmical elements, like the drums, percussions, hats, and so on. Let's try it here. The thing that I love to do, I had to do it a lot with my tracks, is like a double kick here. The main idea is you sh it shouldn't be that hard. So you want to make it a bit softer, a bit quieter. What I like to do, decrease the length, decrease the volume a bit so that we have this quieter first hit. Simple. But this is of course the tensional rhythmical variation, but the one that I like to do, of course, the hi-hat variation. At the moment we are playing exactly the same thing all the time. But we can do the, 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 the kind of stuff, right? What if we take this? Like that. Let's listen with the track. If it fits, it's important that you always listen. And I immediately realized, no, it is not enough because then kind of like a double rhythm somewhere here to make it even more interesting. Like here, maybe you want that, maybe not best. Let's loop this like that. But this is even more beautiful of times, like at the moment we are playing the same high end, and it is actually kind of long. Here, this one. We may shorten this up like we did before, like that. I may even make it a bit brighter. I don't want to tune it up, I want to keep the sound, but I'm going to introduce this AQ8 and cut it a bit. And that means that these doubles, especially here for example, when we play the missing notes, we can put it up, meaning that... You see that? <laughs> now it when it comes in, we feel much more like a really driving feel. Otherwise, it will be always driving. You don't want to have it this always driving feeling, right? Again, these things doesn't need to be super advanced and complicated. Now we have these hats. At the beginning, maybe it is fine like this. But main idea is like, can we play around this too? Because it's like a chit a chit. -a. Here especially, take a look what we don't have anything here, so this is a perfect place to use an out here. Write this one. Again, I don't want this loud. I'm gonna duplicate it, make it quieter, make it probably tune up this time, brighter. Yeah, let's try it if it plays out. It works, but it's too loud. Let's bring this down. This one and this one actually sounds a bit similar. That creates really cool effect, which I really liked. So I'm going to use it. Try again. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm gonna do the same thing and I will probably just use the new version. Yes, that looks good. Let's keep this one the way it is. Turn this on. Or maybe take it off and introduce here. Even better. And when it comes to the rhythmical variation, sometimes you can do the similar things with the claps and the hats as well. The one thing that often used by the more melodic techno artists are calling claps, right? Right here. There's a different ways to do it. I like to reverse sometimes and try it if it, that works. So it calls into itself. Didn't work out. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't work. The other version includes adding a reverb and making it mushier. And in this case, it will be like a contrast origin sound. Let's make it a high. Fine. Yeah, this works a little better and I'm gonna decrease the amount, probably shorter. Here we go. Cool. Uh, on the other hand, rhythmical patterns can also be applied to the bass sound. What we can do, for example, try something like this. I think it doesn't work, that's why I'm going to take it back. But keep in mind that you can do the similar things with your melodic elements by changing their rhythm rhythms. Which brings us to another, a bit more complicated and overlooked idea is the harmonic variation. Harmonic variation consists of different parts. The first part is counter countering melodies. For this track, I think the countering melody idea is not a good idea because we have a really long and all the time playing melody. So we don't have space for countering melody. Just to show you how it can be used, I'm going to add another serum pack here, patch here. And I'm going to just do one of the most common techniques that is used. You don't need to again do it this way, but I will just show you when the sustain sounds good. But this is only the first thing, there are a billion things that you can do. The second thing actually called the voicing or the melody voicing. Meaning that rather than playing exactly the same note of the original melody, you add an, another layer. But in this layer, you actually play another voice of the melody. So the notes are not the same. Simple illustration will be like here. Let's do it like at the last part of the track. So that we had additional change there. So what I'm going to do, group them up because these two should play really well together. And what we are going to do, play together. Let's put it like one octave up. And in the voicing, you shouldn't be using too much notes. So I'm going to take this off. Maybe something like this. We're kind of countering like a down down, right? I think this is overkill. Let's keep the two notes voicing. Let's listen to the track again. You can't spend a lot of time here. Voicing actually something can take like uh, days. I have, for example, working on a new track now and uh, I'm working on the voicing in two days. There are certain techniques that always work, for example, using the third and fifth and so on. But to make it really authentic, you sometimes just experiment and see how it goes. So this part may take more time, but it so oftentimes it's really worth the effort. So let's try one more time together with the track. Really, really cool. This brings us to the accordion versions. I'm thinking here, for example, you play it. I like to progress this one. And like, I'm not gonna add another chord or change it, but I'm gonna change the voicing of the chords going upwards so that it gives it more like natural tension. 
or natural progression. So what I'm thinking like right here, These are still the same notes or the same chords, but we are just changing the voice. And if you feel it, this doesn't work, you can go, for example, the root note. You should always listen together with the track to really see if this progression works or fits. Let's try. I'm not sure if this should be the... Let's try this. I actually have a better idea because this is like a six bars. I'm gonna keep the first bar like this. So I'm gonna just slightly open this up and later on maybe here I can open up more. So what I'm gonna do like this and then here I go maybe up. Now we have even more original, original two, right? In this case it should be white and it should be I say this color. So we have three different options here that we can actually utilize during the track depending on energy levels. But let's see if this works. And this brings us to the, the final part in the variation which is called the tonal variation. Tonal variation means that we can actually change the tonality of the sounds while we are going forward. Tonal variations are especially important creating the local tensions. Meaning that, for example, here in this chord, if we go in here, you can see that we can actually play different parts with the serum. Let's say we want to play with the cutoff, right? So here, for example, we can make a movement in the chord. So every going out of the bar, let's say, while moving out on the four bar, chord progression always has kind of a slight opening. And same thing will be happening here. Let's do that here. And here we can do the same thing, right? Cut off. And let's see. And then we bring it down. The more important thing with this type of sounds actually how you express your melody. Especially if you have something a strong melody like this, right? If you come back here, but with what I'm trying to say, for example, you can put this expressions on different notes like here. Let's do like this, right? And maybe go up. When it comes to the tonal variation, there is a billion ways to do it. You can, for example, open this up, play with the envelopes while melody goes around. But I will show you one of the most applied method here, like uh, having playing with the reverb to feeling like a sucking feel. So here if I play. Do you see what I'm trying to do? Like dun 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 Here I'm thinking like okay, increase the reverb, decrease it. Like and then maybe you can abuse more. Really, really cool. What I'm going to do is just duplicate because I just want to have this epic like, modulation right all the time because it's really dope. Let's play, play with the track together. It's really subtle. You don't really hear it too much, but I feel like this subtle change is really adds up when you add one after another and whole track becomes much more organic and expressive, I will say. This video has been really long. I want to jump to the automation and effects now. What we said is this is low energy level, this high energy level. One of the easiest way to create this low energy balance is actually playing with the cutoff and opening it up and closing it down. And I know already a place that this low pad. I definitely consider it like coming from the behind and open up, probably open all the way up here and then close it back again and 
continue opening up, right? Something like this probably will work really nicely. That additional note contributes really nicely. And then we close it. And together with the track, important to always do A, B. The first thing you immediately realize, okay, my sound levels, volume levels are different now. What should I do? The glue compressor is really perfect for this type of stuff. What you can do, you can really drive it into the glue compressor and to make up gains so that the volume levels are much more stable, even though you're closing it up and opening it up. And immediately you realize, okay, we did this pad sound and automated. What we can do, we can do the same thing for the main lead sound or the main plug sound, right? Here, I'm gonna go for more like a PRD and then bring down the resonance. I don't want to have too much resonance in this one. As you can see, I don't want to go all the way down again because I don't want to have the same energy level here and there. I want to open this up. I don't want to go all the way down, keep the energy levels a bit up. Now, this is cool and nice, but there is a one big thing that is missing, which is the first a bit air to a bit reverb to ambience to enhance this like moving between the places, right? The first thing I'm going to do is actually I have an overdrive here and I have a pet sound here. You see what I'm going for, right? I'm going to send the pet sound overdrive to create air. Cool, not enough. The one thing that I'm gonna do now is actually insert another return channel and create a shimmer. It doesn't need to be shimmer, you can use anything really. Let me do it with the, for example, hybrid verb in this case. We want something air, something lush, so that we can send the stuff here before we're hitting this kind of energy buildups, right? And we should have like a shimmer here and let's send some and see how it reacts. Put it under. That is cool. Let's go to EQ, cut this off. Increase the K and I'm going to increase the size. Do you see all this shimmering sound? Basically means that it's pitched up and the big size, big decay so that we have this really lush big effect. Again, we don't want to send it all the time there because it's a very long tail sound. We're going to bring it down afterwards. Probably we should bring it up early, earlier. Cool, right? And then we can go here, decrease the damp so that we have brighter sound and boost a bit more highs. Put a vintage on as well. So that we get this old air noise sound. Let's go for a hole. This is cool, this is nice. Again, always, always listen to the track. The only thing that slightly bothers me is a bit too... What I'm going to do, put a gain there. Bring this down. Again, I want the same effect on the on the other sound as well, but I'm not sure if I want to use too much shimmer. I can go for maybe big hole. I need to see how it sounds. Here we have the big hole reverb, I think. It overdrive should sound bright. Kind of. Not really bright, but yeah. Let's do that and bring this up down it 
So what I'm going to do, send the drums to the shimmer or the another reverb right before the break hits so that we can have a smoother transition here, right? Like if we have the whole reverb. But oftentimes it works really nice together with this one is actually also filtering it out so that it doesn't really get too obvious. Like in this case, we have something like this, right? And we can just filter out when we are sending. Maybe this was a bit too fast, we can do it slower, slower. Probably we don't need to send it that much. And the one more thing, again, I feel like this last clap hit here, it should be like bum, right? We should really feel that. And what I'm going to do, we are using this clap and we're going to put one, up, one here and let's put that. And we're going to make it louder, but we're going to put a reverb on top of that. Like that, longer, and we want, of course, darker as well. Once you feel like the automations are fairly fine enough, and then you can consider, okay, what type of effects I need here. Because if you consider, if you start adding effects at the beginning, you will always end up adding too much of effects, and it will be really hard to glue the track. But at this point, we feel like there are not too much effects needed, right? Maybe in a couple of pieces there and here, we can add one thing that I'm thinking, like maybe here. Like the reverse symbol could be nice, right? Maybe something like this, right? Again, from Berlin Pack, volume it down. Let's get it here. The one thing is to make it more glued, maybe we can add a bit delay. We already have a nice delay here, probably. Let me see if that works. Just like that. One final thing, maybe adding kind of a horn here may work, may not work, I don't know. Again, I'm really picky with the transition effects, so I really avoid, suggest you to try to avoid using them as much as you can because it will really make your track much more glued and coherent. So let me try from our pack, kind of horn sound. Let's volume this down, let's see if it works. Let's EQ them out. I think it works fine. Again, this it is like in the edge. It's maybe too much, maybe not, but I'm not really. Like that, and I'm gonna also side tune the kick so that we have a groove on top. We can even make it more glued, maybe introduce this guy over here as well. The one thing that we forget to do maybe automation is like the bass sound here. We can definitely make it darker in the beginning as well. Adding up a lot of filter. Right, it really adds up to the sound. So what we're going to do here. Let's do an A-B test and see how it was earlier and how it became. So it was like this.
again, it's a cool loop, right? Like it, at the first four bars, like it feels good. It's, it's a nice loop to listen to. But after a while, after eight bars, you really get started. Okay, there's no change. There's no variation. It feels boring, kind of. Even though the loop itself, the ideas were good. And look what happened when we add all the different small things on top of small variation on top of that and how loop became more interesting and easier to listen to fully. Take a look. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something and I will catch you next one. Goodbye.